In this video, we're talking about what's left of Hurricane Ida as it tracks across the rest of the eastern U.S. Also, the tropics are really active right now and there are multiple hot spots to watch. And then we're looking at the medium range forecast for the whole U.S. to try and sniff out that next big storm. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. First of all, I want to say thank you to everybody that tuned into the live stream on Ida the other day. We did 14 hours of continuous coverage on Hurricane Ida as it made landfall and then worked inland. We reached almost a million people and certainly had a significant impact on some of the people down there who uh, didn't have access to otherwise adequate coverage. Now, I'm going to have an update on Louisiana and the extent of the disaster here uh, within the next couple of days, but for right now, the storm's still ongoing for a lot of people. So without further ado, let's start talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America, and as you can see, the remnants of Hurricane Ida can be found right here over the Ohio Valley, down through Tennessee, and into the Deep South, okay? It doesn't look nearly as organized as it did as a hurricane not too long ago, but it's still causing problems out here, okay? We're gonna be talking about severe weather today in the Deep South and also some potential flooding through the Ohio Valley all the way up into the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast regions. This is just a tropical depression right now and it's actually going through a weakening phase, but there's still gonna be some major problems out there. So let, let, me, let me talk more about that on the weather models. All right, this is the NAM three kilometer model, okay? We use this to kind of look at what the radar could look like in the future. Uh, as you can see, we've got hurricane or what's left of Hurricane Ida spinning up right here around the border of Alabama and Tennessee and this is going to be at 10 a.m. today around the time this video goes up so remember if you want to keep up with the date and time it's always going to be displayed right there above my head in eastern time okay so there's really two parts of this storm this thing's still rotating counterclockwise uh, and it's still pulling up a significant amount of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico and it's pulling down some cooler air behind it and on the front side this uh, part a of the storm we should call it that's going to lead to some severe weather and possibly some tornadoes and then on the back side side over here we're going to be talking about some very heavy and significant rain uh, it's it's through this area right here that we are probably going to see some very uh, prolific and damaging flooding over the next couple of days and I want you guys to make sure that you take this seriously uh, because this is going to end up being a lot of rain for some people who are, are already seeing some saturated grounds out there so if you live in a flood prone area make sure you're ready for an uh, for a flash flood warning to come through because I really do think a lot of us are going to see too much rain and uh, we're just going to see a lot of flooding problems problems, especially on the northern side of the storm. Remember that. So on the southern side, the Storm Prediction Center does have a slight risk of severe weather today with a 5% chance of tornadoes, okay? So this is really common uh, with tropical storms as they move through uh, the United States. After they make landfall, after the uh, hurricane wind gusts and the storm surge, after that's not a problem anymore, usually we switch over to a mini tornado outbreak on the southeastern quadrant of the storm. So that's what we're watching today, okay? This is going to be in Alabama, Georgia, and Florida, this region right here. That This is where you really need to watch out for those uh, isolated spin-up tornadoes today. I don't think this is going to be a widespread outbreak, but certainly there are going to be some tornadoes and you may be one of those people that are affected by it. Uh, so make sure, once again, you're ready for that. Have some way of getting weather warnings. Uh, that way, if something does go down, you can get to shelter very quickly and also have a plan in place as to what that shelter looks like and how you're going to get there. And then we're going to watch this heavy rain band move to the northeast here. And the good news is over the next couple hours, it looks like that's going to deteriorate a little bit. So uh, like I said, a lot of uh, middle Tennessee and, and portions of central Kentucky here might have dodged a bullet uh, because it does look like this storm's going through a little bit of a dry air phase. It might have uh, attained some uh, dry air on this side and now it's you know kind of waiting for more of that Gulf moisture before it really ramps back up over here. Uh, so I you know if this model is correct I do think that portions of Kentucky and Tennessee and maybe even into southern Ohio and portions of West Virginia really dodged a bullet because I don't think we're going to see a lot of the rain that we initially thought we would. Uh, now, over here in western Tennessee and middle Tennessee, the rain's coming down right now, okay? Uh, so, uh, by the time this video goes up, if you're not seeing any extensive flooding, uh, you're probably not going to, okay? After this video goes up, you've maybe got a couple hours left of the rain. The creeks and streams are going to continue to rise, but if it's not already a significant problem, uh, I think you're in the clear. I don't think it's going to be. Additionally, around 3 p.m. today is when we're going to see these really strong storms start, start to pop up in Georgia, Alabama, and uh, uh, portions of of Florida, it's these storms, these feeder bands that are still feeding into uh, the main center of circulation there that we have to watch out for for the uh, tendency of cyclonic rotation. Uh, really quick here, let's take a look at those 850 millibar winds. This is the lower level jet stream. Uh, basically, to simplify this for you, what we're looking for are these dark reds and browns south and east of the central area of uh, pressure. Okay, so anywhere down here uh, that is in the uh, dark reds and browns, that's where the uh, jet stream is actually uh, cranking above 40 or 50 knots. 
uh, and it's happening at the perfect level uh, to where those surface winds are going to interact with it and cause uh, some significant rotation there. Uh, so once again, it's at this point right around 10 a.m. Uh, into uh, the uh, 1 or 2 p.m. time frame that we're going to have the most significant spin. Okay, also 4 p.m. You can see right here uh, from southeastern Tennessee, oh, extreme southeastern Tennessee, all the way into northern Georgia, into portions of Alabama, we might have the you know a, a couple of tornadoes pop up here. And thankfully, as this goes over North Carolina and South Carolina, it's going to weaken quite a bit, but it is going to ramp back up tomorrow into Thursday and, and bring probably another pretty significant threat for severe weather and uh, tornadoes over here in Maryland, the Delmarva area, all the way down towards uh, Virginia Beach there. So, uh, you know, we're going to keep a very close eye on this because that, once again, this is, could be a very uh, serious problem for some people as these tornadoes can cause uh, damage as they come through. But it's this area to tomorrow into Thursday and this area today that needs to watch the most for tornadoes. Now let's rewind back and continue watching this rain as it moves through. Okay. So once again, it kind of, you know, deformed here over Kentucky and portions of Ohio. And now it's coming back together. 5 a.m. on Wednesday, we're going to see a little disturbance from the north kind of inject itself into uh, the energy here from the storm. And it's really going to ramp back up with some of those heavier rains in eastern Ohio, northern parts of West Virginia, and especially into Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Delaware. Okay. And look at here, the, the southern portion of the storm with all those se severe thunderstorms and tornadoes is likely going to be dying off at this time because we saw that cycle uh, process that it was going through as it's re-strengthening here as it gets closer to this uh, coast. Now, as we get into Wednesday, here we are 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m. These are, once again, storms we have to watch here in the North Carolina and Virginia for possibly seeing tornadoes. And then this is extremely heavy rain down here in Pennsylvania, down through the panhandles of Maryland and West Virginia, and into the Appalachian Mountain regions here. I'm really concerned about flash flooding over here in the really high elevations. Uh, as you know, valleys don't work very well with <laughs> heavy rain, so you gotta watch out for that. And let's keep pushing this forward and look at this. Some of that severe weather is going to affect the Washington, D.C. region. It's going to affect much of Maryland and once again down here uh, towards the coast of Virginia. Uh, these storms have to be watched for tornadoes, but everything north of this line, all this big area of red and green and yellow that you see here, that's just really heavy rain and it's going to be causing a lot of problems as far as uh, flooding goes as we go forward. Some of these storms could be strong in the southern side of Jersey and Delaware, maybe even into Long Island uh, around 4 a.m. on Thursday with a marginal tornado threat. But the main thing you guys are watching out for is this big wall of rain that's going to move through uh, right afterwards. Look at that. Very heavy rain in New York City through Long Island around 9 a.m. on Thursday. This is going to be causing some significant flooding up there because we just had Hurricane Henry come through and uh, the ground is still saturated. We still have some swollen creeks and rivers up here and they are probably going to be coming out of their banks pretty soon. So here's the total precipitation expected from the NAM model, okay? Once again, you see that break period here in Eastern Kentucky, Southern Ohio, east, Northeastern Tennessee, I really hope that's uh, you know correct because we don't want to see the flooding there. Uh, but you, you still have a little bit of rain to go down here in western and middle Tennessee, and you have a lot of rain to go up here in the northeast. Look at this. Some places could see over 10 inches of rain uh, right along the border of Maryland and Pennsylvania there. And then once again, right here around New York City, around Tom's River, New Jersey, uh, maybe over 10 inches of rain is possible there. So once again, uh, this is a place that has been worked over by rain uh, for the majority of this year. And a lot of those uh, creeks and rivers are already, you know, above where they're supposed to be. And I think this is this is going to probably end up causing a pretty uh, significant river flooding problem over here. So uh, you know, once again, I'm going to say it one last time. If you live in a flood prone area and you see yourself underneath the reds or the browns there, you've got to take precautions now because it's about to get serious. Now let's look through some other model totals here for the rainfall. Uh, the NAM 12 kilometer model has, tends to suggest that northwestern uh, precipitation shield is going to hold together here through south uh, west or southeastern Ohio and northern Kentucky and drop a significant amount of rain. Uh, so we need to keep that in mind. I want to make sure that just because that one model shows that it's going to weaken over this portion of the country, we don't need to, you know, completely believe that. And we need to do everything we can to make sure we're taking as many precautions as possible to prepare for this storm. So even though, uh, you know, it does look like we're going to get a little bit of a break here in central and eastern Kentucky and southern Ohio and western portions of West Virginia, still, if you live in a flood prone area, go ahead and prepare. Uh, the Euro 
Figaro also is continuing to show a lot of rain here uh, through portions of uh, Tennessee, Kentucky. And then, you know, the, the one thing that's not a question is this area up here is going to get absolutely hammered by rain, okay? Uh, so especially southeastern Pennsylvania. Please, please make sure you're ready for that. All right, let's zoom out here to the whole United States and let's take a look at the uh, forecast as we go throughout the next week or so uh, to see, you know, if there's anything else imminently that we need to talk about. Here's our storm, Hurricane Ida, or what's left of it. We're going to get it out of here uh, by around, you know, Thursday at 8 a.m. It's going to be bringing a lot of rain to the northeast, uh, but most of that rain is going to be working it out of here uh, probably by around Friday at 5 a.m. Okay, still going to have some showers over here in Maine, but most of us are going to be finally uh, being able to recoup uh, from this storm at this point. Lots of flooding over here, lots of wind damage, and, you know, probably weeks and weeks and weeks of restoration progress down here in the extreme south southern portion of the Gulf Coast. Now, we shift our focus a little bit back towards the west here as we have this storm system trying to move through early on Friday. Uh, this could bring some severe weather from uh, Kansas through Nebraska all the way up through Iowa and portions of Minnesota. We've got to watch that one closely as it could potentially uh, bring forth some more damaging winds and maybe some uh, tornadoes. That frontal boundary is going to kind of get stuck around here and cause some additional rain through Kansas into Kentucky and uh, West Virginia and Tennessee. Uh, but I think the most significant story here is look at this. You see these lines that are kind of dipping down like this. That tells me that there's some colder air coming down from Canada. And you know what happens when there's cold air next to warm air? we get storms, okay? Another storm system is forming over here in Nebraska, gonna send down some possibly, once again, some severe weather into Iowa and uh, Illinois here on uh, Tuesday, September 7th, and that looks like it could be a pretty significant severe weather maker there. We gotta watch that one closely. Could bring some stuff into Indiana and Ohio as well as it tries to resurge the warm air just a little bit here, uh, but uh, it eventually loses as pretty much the last thing we're gonna look at here all the way out on Thursday, September 9th, as we have a big area of much cooler air moving Moving into the United States and this is the first sign that I've seen on the weather models of fall okay also if we rewind this back a little bit here another sign of fall look at that you see that that is the first time in several months I've seen that on this map, even as far up into Canada. I haven't seen any snow, okay, but <laughs> it's possible we're going to see some snow up here in uh, western portions of Canada. It's getting that time, guys. <laughs> Not only is it peak hurricane season, but it's just about time for us to start getting that cold air and start tracking snowstorms, too. Speaking of cold air, the east coast and the west coast both are going to be significantly cooled off from these storm systems. That last frontal boundary that I showed you there is going to bring possibly some four 40 degree temperatures uh, as lows through much of the northern uh, part of the United States. Okay, so especially up here in North in the Dakotas, we're going to be talking about 40 to 50 degrees uh, uh, over here in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, 40 to 50 degrees. But even you know we're talking about 50, 60 degrees down here into the Ohio Valley. So that's a lot cooler than what we have seen. And even as highs, okay, we're talking about 8 p.m. on Thursday, September 9th. Uh, we may not be making it out of the 70s for a lot of the Ohio Valley, and still up here in the 50s and 60s in Michigan, okay? 50s and 60s through a lot of New England here. So these are also some of the coolest temperatures I've seen so far. You don't see that big giant area of 100 degree temperatures in the central portion of the United States, so I'm sure we'll all, you know, gladly accept the cool off period. Uh, but yeah, this is a major fall cool down. This is the first sign of fall that I've seen. We're going to keep an eye on this because, uh, you know, this could lock us into a pattern here uh, to where we stay cool for a long time time. Uh, now, unfortunately, the temperatures are still, uh, you know, pretty high over here. We had a brief cool down in the northwest, and it looks like it's going to heat back up here uh, towards the beginning or the middle of uh, September with those 100 degree temperatures reaching all the way back up into Washington. All right, another update from the National Hurricane Center here. This is the five day outlook. OK, so we are in peak hurricane season. Uh, we got a lot of hot spots to watch. Uh, this is Ida. Obviously, it's going to get out of here and uh, leave us alone. Uh, this is also Tropical Storm Kate. OK, so we completely missed Julian and all of the uh, uh, carnage uh, that is Ida. Nobody even <laughs> heard about Ju Julian uh, as it formed and went this way. Uh, it looks like Kate might do the same thing. So let's get an update on Tropical Storm Kate here. Yeah, so thankfully the high pressure that's located over here is pretty weak right now and it's not going to, uh, you know, send all these storms directly towards the United States. And it looks like this one's going to maintain its strength as a tropical storm and just kind of, you know, it, it's, it's not going to do much of anything as it gets out of here, okay? I don't think this has any threat whatsoever to the United States. However, these other two blobs, this 
lemon and this strawberry here are really kind of getting me concerned, okay? So this is the exact area where Hurricane Ida formed, and it does look like there is an area of low pressure that's forecasted to develop over the southwestern Caribbean Sea in a couple of days. Now, the good thing is right now, no, none of the models show this turning into anything significant and then coming back up to the Gulf Coast, but neither did they in the beginning for Ida. All right, so uh, we've got to watch this one closely as you know something could form down here and come straight up into the Gulf Coast once again, or it could go across the Yucatan Peninsula and hit um, uh, uh, you know the Mexico coast there like Hurricane Grace did. And then even more concerning, over here uh, off the coast of Africa, a little thunderstorm wave came off and it does look like there is now a 90% chance of a cyclone formation in five days. Uh, this one's likely going to turn into a pretty significant hurricane, okay? And a lot of our hurricanes uh, that happen over here on the East Coast, especially especially in Florida, a lot of them happen uh, this way, okay? A storm comes off of Africa and then goes across the Atlantic Ocean and then hits Florida. But as you've seen, what happened with Kate here is uh, she's gonna go straight north because the high pressure that's over here isn't uh, you know, pushing down enough to project these storms uh, over towards the west. All right, so now let's go over here to the GFS model. One last thing we gotta look at is we're gonna see what the GFS shows the storm's gonna do right now, okay? So that's our wave. It's quickly gonna turn into a very strong storm here way out here in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, not really affecting anybody, uh, but at this point it will be turning into probably a tropical storm, category one, category two hurricane. Uh, this thing may make it all the way up to a major hurricane status, uh, but as of right now, uh, if you look out here at the MSLP readings, there's not a lot of high pressure out here to project this uh, towards the United States. Not only uh, could the model be wrong about the exact placement and intensity of the storm, it can be wrong about the exact placement and the intensity of the high pressure as well. So as of right now, that high pressure is going to give up and allow for that storm storm to continue off to the north. Once again, it's going to become a major hurricane here likely, uh, but thankfully it looks like it's not going to affect the United States. It's going to get caught up with our uh, jet stream there and just kind of become a, uh, a typical uh, fall and late summertime storm for the uh, United Kingdom. Okay, but here's what could happen. All right, this thing could get going, get cranking as a big hurricane. High pressure builds up over here and then kind of advects down toward the south and west and then guides this thing right towards the east coast. Now, I'm not saying that that's going to happen, but it's always a possibility. It's always a possibility with these storms. Anytime I ever see anything come off the coast of Africa there, I'm immediately concerned. Most of our storms that are pretty significant on the east coast here and even some of them in the, uh, in the Gulf Coast uh, happen this way. They come out here and then they go straight towards the coast. So we got to watch this one very closely. But as of right now, no threat to land. All right, an update on the Louisiana situation. We do currently have uh, a million people without power or at least uh, a million residences. That's probably going to be around 2 million actual people without power. If you assume that there are two people in every home, going to be a long time before uh, any of this stuff is restored. We're talking about possibly two or three. And in some cases, I've heard it maybe six weeks uh, uh, before a uh, power is restored and that includes the downtown new orleans area as a lot of the infrastructure there was significantly damaged now once again i'm going to have a full impact video on hurricane ida here coming soon after the, the storm's done but in the meantime we're going to continue to track the storm as it moves off to the northeast okay Thank you to everybody that's here right now, okay? Not only did we reach a lot of people and we helped a lot of people during the live stream, uh, but this channel grew significantly. We got like 16,000 new subscribers. I wanna thank all of you for being here. I hope you stick around. I hope that you uh, are enjoying the content and all that stuff, and I hope that uh, uh, we can be together for a long time. This is what I do. I'm not gonna stop doing this anytime soon. I post almost daily videos, as long as there's severe weather going on, talking about every area of the country that's being affected, and then during extremely severe you know weather situations i do those live streams like i did with ida thanks for watching make sure you slap that like button subscribe if you haven't already and turn notifications on and i'll see you in the next one goodbye